it's the Dark Knight's preferred method of transportation. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be taking a look at the evolution of the Batmobile. Debuting in 1941's Detective Comics number 48, Batman's car quickly became his greatest tool for fighting crime. Originally lacking any semblance to what it is today, it was bright red and lacked fins or shields. In fact, it was devoid of the signature bat theme, with the small exception of a gold hood ornament. In its place, it had a supercharged engine and a heavily reinforced nose capable of smashing through obstacles. Following its initial appearance, Batman's ride was overhauled several months later when it reappeared in Batman issue number 5. Now black in color, it became equipped with fender skirts to protect the tires, armored panels, a fin, and even a bat head shaped battering ram. Despite the major leap in design, it would continue to be reinvented regularly due to different artists adding their own interpretations of what the car should be. These changes included shifting its size, shape, and features while adopting futuristic concepts such as that of a bubble dome. Despite the thrilling changes going on in the comics, 1943's live-action Batman series did away with any sense of style. This was due to the program's low budget, which could only afford its producers to acquire a black Cadillac, which came to be used by both Bruce Wayne and Batman. In 1964, Batman's car was revamped to become a sportier two-seat roadster. This in turn led to the design of the 1966 television series version, which was equipped with Ford's abandoned Futura concept car. This became the first full-size, fully operational Batmobile, and was chosen for its ability to easily showcase the dynamic duo. Due to the show's success, this vehicle instantly became one of the most famous in the world. A few years later, the design of the car was modified for the Super Friends cartoon series, with the unique considerations of making a car that could easily be redrawn repeatedly for the animation. Then, after nearly three decades, Batman returned to live action in 1989 with Tim Burton's Batman. Thanks to a darker take on the Caped Crusader, it was unlike any previous incarnation. With a custom-built body, it added a front jet turbine intake, rear afterburner, side fins, two-seat cockpit with aircraft-like instrumentation, a heavy metal armor cocoon, and an array of weaponry. These included spherical bombs, a pair of machine guns, and grappling hook launchers. Insanely popular, it rivaled the attention given to the previous live-action Batmobile. <laughs> and became the main influence on the design of its counterpart in Batman, the animated series. Of course, for marketing purposes, the Batmobile was completely redesigned twice for Joel Schumacher's films Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. The first was based off of an organic aesthetic that mirrored a body's use of ribs and lungs. The second version features an older roadster design that stretched out over 30 feet long and could only seat one. Continuing to change dramatically from one comic book series to the next, it was finally remade for the big screen when the Cape Crusader returned for 2005's Batman Begins. I gotta get me one of those. In this series reboot, it was given a function over style consideration, capable of making large jumps and forming an escape motorcycle from its front wheels. Over the course of 70 years, the Batmobile has changed countless times for the comics, television shows, and films, and will continue to change as long as there are Batman comics, films, and merchandise. 